Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for attending the session. Thanks to Toshiba for organizing everything. Uh, what I'm going to demonstrate today is uh, my technique of doing must, uh, ultrasound. I'm quite passionate about ultrasound. It's probably the fastest growing modality in radiology. And because it's dynamic, you can interact with the patient, you can talk to the patient. This method is a homemade mission, uh, method by myself, based on my previous uh, GP, sport physician, clinical diagnosis and clinical assessment. Uh, ultrasound is one of those things, musculoskeletal ultrasound. The more you see, the more you know, the more you know, the more you see. And when you get to a stage where you know more than what you see, you either change your machine, and when you get to a stage where you see more than what you know, you better do more scans. Anyway, so what we do, <coughs> I, no patient comes to you with a normal ultrasound to be done. Most of them have got a pain in the shoulder. So I don't call it musculoskeletal ultrasound. I, I call it problem-solving musculoskeletal ultrasound because most of the problems you develop can't be detected on, a, on an MRI because the patient lies still in an MRI. And clinical assessment of shoulders are difficult. Trust me, it's difficult. And most of the time, they don't make the right diagnosis. I sit the patient like that. And when I scan, I have an anchoring hand and a scanning hand. So whether I'm doing that side, I do it this way. When I'm doing it this side, I'm doing this way. In a view that you dynamically move the shoulder. So I sit the patient in that way. And then you always have to have a, which is a gain of it. You always have to have a starting point. Now, the starting point is your pec major tendon, attachment to the, to the, uh, the humerus. Please pay attention to that, because if they ask you if this tendon is torn or not, and you haven't seen a hundred of them before, you wouldn't know what you're looking at, because there's always a sleeve that leaves there. And pay attention to the tendon attachment to the bone, because like your Achilles tendon implant, you could always get implantation tendinopathy. So you move the tendon, and you see your, your pec major tendon. Now, directly under your pec major tendon, your biceps tendon will start right there. So then you go transversely. All tendons first, you go transversely on the tendon. And you're going to get a little isotropic effect if you tilt your tendon, but you pay attention to that tendon. When there's fluid around the tendon, the shoulder is crying upstairs. That who says there's a limited amount and X amount nonsense. There's fluid around the tendon, the tendon, is, uh, the shoulder is crying. So look for the problem. So pay attention to the transverse section of the tendon. If you see the tendon is completely normal in transverse, don't bother going longitudinal because you might spend the rest of the afternoon doing try and get the tendon in, in sight. So transversely, no problem, carry on. And the uh, acoustic challenging patients, it's sometimes very difficult to see the tendon. So keep an eye on where it comes out of the groove at the top, and that's most of the time so you'll just only see it there, but then you know the tendon is there. All right, so you pay attention to the tendon. Please pay attention to the bicipital groove. If the groove is arthritic, osteophytic, or there's some degeneration in it, it potentially will give... Uh, uh, indication then the biceps tendon might get irritated on the dynamica of the tendon there. The transverse humeral, humeral ligament and the interval ligament is lying over the um, is lying over the, the tendon there, so also pay attention to that. Some people will say with a frozen shoulder you can say thickening of those ligaments. Frozen shoulders, a clinical diagnosis, will you then go into an ultrasound see there's nothing else wrong? So be aware of that, did you measure that? All right, next thing we see is in the medial aspect, we see subscapularis. Okay, now we're gonna do dynamically for subscapularis. Get your coracoid on the left hand side there. You can see your coracoid sitting there. And then we're gonna pull subscapularis out. Now Women can go quite far. They can go to about there. Men can only go to about there. That's why women can walk through a door with their hands on the side. Men can't. All right. So you can pull it out there until you can probably see the muscle tendon junction. Just hold it for me there. All right. So you can see the muscle tendon junction. 
Remember that the, the, the subscapillaris is a wide tendon. You see on MRI, it's got about five fibers coming into it. So pay attention to the bottom part and to the top part. The top, top part, what you see right there, that's normally where the pathology will happen with that part of the tendon, and this will slip into the tendon. So you pay attention to that part of the tendon. All right, so this is the dynamica that we see here. Tendon moves smoothly. Pull the arm out and look for osteophytes of your humeral head there. You know, in the arthritic patients, you see an osteophyte with slight flattening of the humeral head, which you normally hardly see on the posterior side, but the anterior side gives you more the osteophytes. So now, at the level, you will notice that I put the jelly on like this because I don't want to put jelly there. My hand is full of jelly. All right, so you see the bicepital groove. All right, at the level of the bicepital groove, you just go around the humeral head. All right, you go around and around and around. Uh, depth for me a little bit in focus point. Until you, until you get to the posterior labrum. And then you want to demonstrate the posterior aspect of the shoulder. Okay, we normally... Most of them have the six curvy linear. So if you really want to go to the posterior, you can just change quickly to that and look at the posterior labrum. I also use this method with my uh, hydrodilatations of the shoulder and with my uh, arthrogram injections. Shoulder in that position, when you do that, you put the hand on that shoulder, you open the whole shoulder up, and you go straight in. No damage you can do to anything. And this is a fantastic method of intraarticular injection for the shoulder. All right, so we do, we look at the shoulder, you can look at your, uh, terror, uh, your infraspinatus attachment, you can look at your teres minor, and then for your internal impingements, you pick the shoulder up, you abduct, that's not nice vision there, abduct and externally rotate. Now, the early capsulitis very early, before actually so much limited movement. When you do that and you do that, oh, the patient will jump. Because what happens is, is you impinge, you will impinge the capsule against the posterior labrum and the posterior glenoid fossa. So that's a very good technique. You go like this, you must pick it up because if they pick it up, they pull the, the ball into the socket. So if you pick it up and they relax, the the shoulder drop, and you do that. And that is where you do the technique. Oh, and they get in. This patient's got a capsulitis very early. And also an internal impingement we can demonstrate. After this, that I've done that, and look at the posterior aspect, I put the hand on the bum. Right, no, we can't. There's a thing here at the back. My skin normal seats. The reason why I'm using this method, if you use this method, you don't see the supraspinatus. You might think you see it, but you don't. So you use this method because the landmark you have to get is when you stand there, you have to see your biceps stand on. All right. You have to see your biceps stand on. And if you then see your biceps stand on coming out, okay, you, when you, you start on that, you, and then the next thing that will happen, you see a bony change. All right. The bony change is happening there. So when you come out, you get your bicep stand on, you come out, and then you see your bony change. The bony change in, is normally there's a steep angle with a, a groove there. It's only supraspinate, supraspinatus. When you go a little bit further posterior and that flattens out, it becomes infraspinatus. Pay lots of attention to, to, the, to the footprint of the tendons. When you come into that spot there, the footprint of the tendon is very important to see for bone pitting and little micro tears that you can have, intersubstance tears. So you go right posterior. As you see, I've got an anchoring hand, and you can have a slow scanning hand until you get to where the arrow is there is where teres minor implant and go back again onto the, onto the footprint. Then you go to where your curacochromion ligament 
Ach, the, sorry, the coracoid is coming out to see this part of the tendon. And you also again go backwards and forwards so you see the whole area of the um, of your rotator cuff. Supraspinatus, a lot of times you can see the muscle coming out there in this position. Right, so I'm going to show you now from that, the next step you do is you go transverse over this shoulder. Now, this is transverse over the rotator cuff. Here's your interval ligament you see. This is your bicep tendon. Now, you must get this picture when you do the scan. And the picture here must be homogenic. That whole area there, you mustn't do an oblique view like this and an oblique view like that. So you get a homogenic picture, you go distally and you go proximally. And you can see for longitudinal tears, you see your bursa, you see your articulating cartilage. You go right to the back until you see the uh, teres minor coming in. Then again you go back till you get that picture. So you put your biceps tendon in the middle of your picture. And all you do is just come proximally. All right, and the next thing that will pop up in front of you is your cracochromion ligament. All right, so it's just there. Come back and you get your cracochromion ligament. And then you go just again proximally and you're in your IC joint. So the point I want to make in this thing is you have a starting point with your pec major. You go around the shoulder, you come back and you do Come back, you see your coracochromion ligament, beautiful there, and then you, the coracochromion ligament has got a narrow attachment and a wide base attachment to the acromion. Now, in your swimmers and your athletes, that's where you hear the clicking of the, if they do that, they get a clicking. That's where the bursa impinges. And if there's a bit of fluid in the bursa in this position, there will be a fluid bubbling up there. And if they do the clicking, the dynamica, that will click. You'll see how the tendon jump. And then you go from the top, you go to the AC joint into that position. All right, and when they now finish that, then you start to do the dynamica of it. You just let the AC joint first, and then you just let them pick the arm up for me, and let the arm go down, and pick the arm up. And you see if the IC joint opens and closes, open and close, or there's an injury, the IC joint dips down. Then you can take the IC joint, you can take it over the shoulder, and you close it. And they would use over it and close it. All these things must be done by the patient. You just guide them how to do that. Sit a little bit to the side for me. Okay. And that's it. So then we do the dynamic of it. So I let the patient sit like this, turn the thumb back, and get that picture. So you must see your chromion on the left, and you want to see your whole footprint of your tendon, and you see your bursa. And then all you do is you tell the patient to lift the arm up forward. Okay, now what we see there, okay, the thumb back, straight arm, okay, lift it up. Go down, lift it up, go down. Why do I do that? The reason why I'm doing that is when you have an impingement or a piece of calcium or you have a, a, a thick tendon, when you get to that point, the shoulder rides up. You'll see this, the, the greater tuberosity rides up and it goes, hers is sliding nicely under the acromion. When you have an, a person, as they reach an older age, they stop doing exercises of the shoulder. So what's happening, they get upwards riding of the humeral head. The deltoid takes over, the cuff is weakened, so it doesn't pull the ball into the socket. So you get upwards riding of the humeral head. And as soon as the humeral head rides up, you'll see it, in this case, it doesn't do it, but there's no bulging of the, there's no bulging of the subacromion bursa. Go down again. And there's no thickening of the tendon. Now, when they've got a piece of calcium or they've got a tendinopathy or they've got any pathology in that area, you'll find that they get to that point, then they either drop their scapula to get the arm up. Or when you have the problem there, to get your arm up, you cheat. You turn your arm this way and you pick your arm up. But 
this, this method will hurt you, then you automatically turn your arm and pick you up. That's a normal reflex reaction to anybody who's got a pain in the shoulder. All right, so this is how I test it. And then dynamically, you can just put it sideways. You can put it forward. And any method to see if that shoulder is impinging. Again, what I'm trying to say, you have to have an anchoring hand and you have to have a maneuvering hand that you do with, with it. All right, so this is the way I'm doing a, um, a shoulder. My injections, I just talk about intervention of this. The things that we do here is we obviously inject subacromion bursus. Patient lie on the bed. I always make them lie down because I've had a few of them falling off the bed with a needle in the shoulder, so of the chair. So you go lie them on the bed and then you go for your bursa. There's your bursa, beautiful. When you hit your needle into it, I use, I always make sure that my needle bevel is turned away, is, is on the tendon and not this way because otherwise you stick it into the inferior surface of your bursa and it goes in and then you inject and you see a big blob in front of your needle. When you put it in a bursa and you inject, there must be nothing, it must disappear. All right, so this is a, a, a technique I use for that. AC joint, I inject in this way go straight in till I get a transverse and I come in from the side. My hydrodilatations, as I said, my calcium aspirations. Uh, calcium aspiration, which I do quite a lot of, is I decompress the tendon. I try to avoid multiple punctures of the tendon because otherwise all you do is you smoosh that tendon with some very acid. You know, it's like having battery acid in your tendon. So you try and make a fine needle and a fine one hole and then a 19 gauge needle which I then wash that calcium and suck it all out. So you only decompress your tendon and then the patient feel, and you put a bit of steroid in the bursa because the chemical leaking of, of the stuff out of that hole that you made is quite severe and causes severe pain. Hydrodilatations and arthrotic in injections, I do that and I put the, on the back, uh, my, my uh, probe on the back, just change to this probe for me. If you haven't got, if you haven't got, um, if you haven't got these smart new probes and things, you can use your normal abdominal probe. Leave it on the, leave it on a, uh, make it a little bit bigger. Leave it on your, okay, there we are. You leave it on your uh, um, musculoskeletal setting. Just get it a little bit better. And as you can see there, there's your posterior labrum. That's your posterior glenoid fossa which you can see the dynamic of the shoulder if you do it all like that. And then you, you come in right from that point and your needle will hit the, the, the greater tuberosity, articulating cartilage about a centimeter before the, the labrum. Very simple, you can do no damage on that point because you basically go through this teres minor muscle. So you don't need a tendon at all because you take the tendon out of your Equation with internal rotation. Um, you can see when you your Patrick, posterior sorry, we're, glenoid we're waiting fossa. to start the next session. So if you want to finish, uh, we want to finish in the next couple of okay. minutes. They're right. waiting to start the next session. Be careful when you see that. When you do that, and you see that bubble coming up. Remember that's just a vein that bubbles up. If you want to do a, a block of your suprascapular notch, you go in the same vein there, and you just inject that in that area. Thank you very much. Thank you, Petri, for a fantastic demonstration. I'd like to thank all our speakers and for all of you to uh, come here for a lunchtime symposium. And with that, it's the end of the session. Thank you very much for your attention.